There are two kinds of space in an image, positive and negative. And a little game by the name of Hue uses both to great effect, even requiring the player to switch out the negative space with the positive space as the main focus of the game, and then playing with this idea in increasingly more difficult puzzles. But what are positive and negative space? We're going to be covering positive and negative space and then looking at their use in Hue in this video. Hi, my name is Giggity McD. Here on the channel, we talk about the ins and outs of game design so that you are equipped to analyze, discuss, and create great games. Let's talk about space first. Positive space and negative space are complementing arrangements of space in an art piece. Put simply, positive space is the space that is filled within an artwork. It is the space that is being occupied by something. If we arrange a series of shapes in an image, all of the area covered by the shapes is positive space. That leaves negative space as the space in between the objects. The empty space in this image is the negative space. Positive and negative space have a delicate balance, and negative space can be used alongside positive space to add to the piece. A common example used to explain this is Ruben's vase. This might be pretty familiar. If we assume that this is a black area filled with white, then the positive space is this white area in the shape of a vase. But due to the way the space is arranged, the negative space can also be seen as two faces looking at each other in profile. If we invert the image and use the same assumptions, then it becomes a picture of two faces where the negative space forms the shape of a vase. Negative space can also be used in this fashion to achieve many things, arranging positive and negative space to convey all sorts of meaning, as in these examples from Google Images. And if you want to dig into the art theory of positive and negative space, the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper. But this is all we need to look at here. I received Hue as one of the free monthly games that comes along with the PlayStation Plus membership. The colour changing mechanic intrigued me, and I'm glad I gave it a try. The game came out in 2016, and its main mechanic is this colour shifting wheel. When the player rotates the right analogue stick, they are able to select a different colour for the world. This colour swaps out the background, and in doing so, enables and disables certain objects in the level. This leads to some really interesting puzzles. In a regular game, you are basically traversing the negative space of a level. Things are put in the way of the player, and the player has to navigate the empty space to find a solution to their issue. In Hue, you can change which space is empty and which space is filled. This ability means that the player needs to not only be aware of the empty space around them, but also what can change. This is in order to flip the negative spaces of the level over to positive ones to allow interaction. This starts off fairly easy, with one colour where the player needs to learn how changing the background colour will make the aqua squares disappear. They then need to use this crate to avoid these spikes and falling boulders. Later on in the game, this idea escalates a bit to needing to change between a few different colours in order to arrange crates in order for jumping on. There are some reflex sections where colours need to be changed in mid-air, so the player needs to consider the positive and negative space under time pressure, and then this mechanic gets iterated on over and over until the player has eight colours and they are going into puzzles like this, with many different colours that need to be changed between in specific sections of the level keeping in mind not only colour, but lasers and conveyor belts and crates and slime. Let's have a look at some of my favourite puzzles and how they use positive and negative space. Early on in the game, there is a puzzle that has three columns. You can see the puzzle is arranged like this when you enter the room. This puzzle is a good use of negative and positive space because you need to be aware of several things at once. The solution is to place each block of a colour under a different colour of bricks, then swap the colours as you jump across. I like this because it's deadly simple. But in order to work it out, you need to keep in mind the positive space by making sure each block is where it is supposed to be, the negative space by being aware that each one needs to be under a different colour, and also use the negative space by pushing one of the coloured blocks through another to set up the solution. This puzzle was another simple one, but I like the theory of it because I'm a nerd. In this one, you are under constant pressure from these skulls that fall when you run underneath them. You need to run from left to right and on the way you encounter these blocks that crumble when you land on them. Once past these blocks, you need to pass these walls. This requires you to flip your mental arithmetic, which is why I like it. You are under pressure and you need to pick any colour that is not the block you intend to land on. Then you need to flip that while you are still under pressure because you need to pick the same colour as the wall to jump through this section. This is then repeated again with different platforms and walls. And finally, I also really like this maze level. The design is instantly recognisable as a maze, and when you add the colour changing mechanic, it is a cool twist on the normal maze formula. It isn't super complex, but you need to consider what positive space is filled with colours, so you can work out your options for paths. Then you need to change the positive space 
into negative space to allow you to pass. And the puzzle element of the level is then navigating the solid maze by using the negative space to get to the key and then get over to the door. And now to end on, I thought I would just point out one little detail that I really like that isn't part of a puzzle. And that detail is, all of the outside of the level that is black is detailed with various lines and shapes that hint at what the black area is made of, whether it's bricks or dirt or parts of the university buildings. But I like how all this detail is negative space instead of just lines on top of the surface. So when you change the colour of the world, all the details change too because the background can be seen through the gaps. I think it goes a long way to tying the world together beautifully and keeping a really minimal and consistent aesthetic. If you haven't already, hitting subscribe will line you up for game design content in the future. Hitting like will help the channel out and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.